of March 7th, and we just got them. I think we've looked at them, though. Yeah. Do I hear any changes? Do I hear a motion for approval? I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of March the 7th, 2020. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a second? <coughs> I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor, state aye, please. Aye. aye. All opposed. All righty. Now, on our agenda today, we have two items. The first is to discuss and consider the COA of property located at 504 North Mound, and then we have a public hearing. Yay. <clears throat> yes, Chairman. Uh, Brian Bray, um, Historic Sites. Oh, I almost said Historic Sites Manager. Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> historic Preservation Officer. Um, this case is from Mike Keller at 504 North Mound Street, COA 2022-001. Um, and I apologize, I, these allergies um, are killing me, so that's the reason I sound this way. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I'm the most allergic to is oak pollen. And Ooh. 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 There's none of that here. My, no. my <laughs> property has three pine trees and everything else is oak tree. Yeah. So I love my house except this time of year. Um, so <clears throat> the request is to construct a one-bedroom apartment attached to an existing carport located behind the house. So it's on the east side of the, the main structure. The new addition will be attached to an existing carport with hardy plank siding, a shingle roof, and vinyl windows measuring approximately 23 feet by 41 feet. Um, the property is, it does say in your, staff, in your staff report that it's not visible from the public right-of-way. The roof is visible from the public right-of-way. Um, but in, use, in the elevation drawings that we'll show here in a second and that were in your packet, you'll see that it's the same height. So you're, you'll see a second roof line, but it's not that it's going to be extending above or below. Um, and staff does recommend approval of this um, mainly because it is a secondary structure not attached to the property and is minimally visible from the public right away. And there's <clears throat> one view depending on what time of year, and this is a Google map image, so there were more trees. I think Mr. Keller's had some of these removed since then. So it's not visible, but from a certain angle between those two houses, you can look back and see it. That is the existing carport. So as you're looking at the screen, it's going to be built to your right. So um, to the right of that existing lattice work. And there's the <laughs> existing elevation along with the proposed elevation. And there's the site location. So Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, and thank you. And the applicant is here as well. Okay, so since Mr. Keller is here and we have Brian also, are there any questions? <coughs> well, it was very well fun. laid out. <laughs> yes, good drawings and everything. <laughs> we were prepared. <laughs> You've been here before. <laughs> I have one. Are you going to attach it to the carport, or are you going to rebuild oh. the carport to match? Yep. Oh. So, yes, it will. It, it is going to be attached to, just like right mm -hmm. there. Okay. So it's an extension of the existing carport and storage area. And this, you can see that the sort of breezeway between the two, mm -hmm. the roof line will be straightened instead of a sloped roof and then connected to the, the new construction. Okay. Well, Any I, discussion? I, well, I please. Think, I guess I can ask. I have to think of a question. I know yeah. Yeah, something. Know. He came here. So, do we have a date for the <laughs> carport? N no, but Mr. Keller might. Oh, yeah, put Mr. Yeah, Keller on the hot on seat. Of approximate <laughs> date of construction of the carport. Well, as soon as we can get everything approved, we're no, gonna the, have the existing carport. Oh, we've already. Right. No. But do you know approximately when? When? Oh, when was it built? Because the house is the house is nineteen oh one. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Good question. I was assuming it was not historic in its own right. No, ma'am. Quite yet. Right. But, right. So, <laughs> but it's getting close. <laughs> yeah. Getting Absolutely. close. All right. Yeah. Okay. Do we have anything else or any discussion? Comments? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I make a motion that we approve COA 2022-001 at 504 North Mound Street. Thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor, state aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed, the same. All right. 
So are you going to own the screen? Am I going to own the screen? <laughs> Only if you name it Keller. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, maybe Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Elliot. Elliot Keller. All right. Now we need to open up the floor. This is a public, open to the public, public hearing. And yes, um, so this request is a historic overlay zoning request um, from the E.J. Campbell Alumni Association. Um, the actual applicant was Cleo Jenkins, who was um, part of that organization. Um, this building is 403 South Shawnee Street. Um, it's essentially the E.J. Campbell um, High School. Um, and this building, I think we can all agree, is pretty historic. There's been um, quite a lot of research done on it. Um, the applicant supplied a decent amount of research for it. Um, part of it was the text for the Texas Historical Commission uh, marker that was put on place in 2014. Um, outlines the entire history of the school itself, um, from segregation to desegregation, how it's the center of a de facto segregated community up in through the 1960s and 1970s. Um, they also supplied a, Sanborn, a 1946 Sanborn map um, that shows how it sits in the community as well. Um, and staff recommends approval of this or a recommendation of this into historic overlay um, based on three of the six criteria um, that you need to look at to determine something can be put under historic overlay zoning. Um, one is possessed significance in history, architecture, archeology, span or culture. Two is associated with events that have made a significant contribution to the broad patterns of local, regional, state, or national history. And three is associated with the lives of persons significant to the city's past, and that refers to Mr. E.J. Campbell. Um, so based on those three, um, we recommend approval of that and y'all passing on that recommendation. Um, just so you know, this is not approving the zoning. Um, it also has to go before the Planning and Zoning Commission, which is on April 11th is their meeting date. And then those two recommendations from HLPC and PNZ go on to City Council on April 19th for the final approval. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have after the public hearing. When were those two other buildings torn down? Do you know? I do not know the date of that. I was huh. just curious. Yeah, and that was not submitted in the packet. We can right, right. we can do some research and see if we can no, find out, but I, I don't have that date. Because I remember them when I was young, okay. <laughs> a million years ago. But anyway. Any questions? Uh, don't we have comments? to have a public hearing? Sure, we yes, have we have to open it to the public. We officially open it for public hearing and ask if anybody would like to speak. Yes. Before. Would anyone like to speak? <laughs> Come on, you're the only person in the audience now. <laughs> she, she's one of my students. <laughs> she's going, oh, okay. I didn't bargain for this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And if there's no comments, you can close the public hearing. Whenever. All right. We will close the public hearing part of this and uh, continue on. <laughs> All right. Well, I, are we now open? Yes, to, uh, we are open to discuss I, it. I actually think, in my opinion, and I don't know if we can do this, but I would add six because over on the Shawnee Street area, for a long time, that was the only brick building of its kind and I know most people think of the main street buildings as a visual mm -hmm. part of what we look at mm -hmm. but on that side of town EJ the school is the visual part of that neighborhood and it was for a very 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 mm -hmm. long time and that can be part of your recommendation if okay. that's what the committee so chooses okay mm -hmm. I don't know if we can adjust absolutely so what we said exactly that, that I suggest that we add six mm -hmm. to criteria one, two, and three. Oh, criteria six. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Along, along. I mean, okay. I know Paul's students have done exhibits and things over at EJ Campbell. Yeah, so, I, mm -hmm. the information that's that's now mm -hmm. has yeah. been displayed, and I just would like to add, um, however goes forward, hallelujah about time. We are very excited um, about it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The community needs more African American representation. Absolutely. Historic properties and I have memorials. I have a question. Please do. Okay, what does the zoning do to to the neighborhood around there? I, I saw where it said it you know, they had to be notified and it's two hundred feet. Is it do will they be required to 
uh, update their homes or if they want no, to yes. update their homes, they have to apply? No, so no, all, um, so what this does, is, and this is part of our planning and zoning, what we do is if you're um, within 200 feet, according to our ordinance, we're required to send out a notification, but we actually send it out 500 feet to anybody around it. Um, a lot of those things pertain to if you're going to change from like a R1 to a business um, district because okay. um, that vastly changes what your property can do. Um, so all we're doing is telling people that this building is applying for historic overlay zoning. It doesn't require them to do anything. Um, it doesn't help or hurt the surrounding neighborhood. It just is telling them that this building in the center um, is going to be part of the historic overlay. Okay. <laughs> and it's the city recognizing it's historic yeah. importance. Yes. But will that open up Shawnee Street uh, to more, possibly more people driving by? I would say tourism, but I don't know if that, that's a bigger word, just more visitors or? Um, I don't know if it would lead to that necessarily. It does give the option that other people, if they have historic buildings around it, can apply for a historic overlay zoning of their own and reference this building if it goes forward. Okay. Um, but I don't think it leads to additional tourism. Okay. However, I would be remiss not to add that in official city uh, promotional materials, whatever they may be or may become, mm -hmm. um, it would be included. Right. Yeah. We do have a brochure that's the oldest buildings in the oldest town, so things like that. We, we tend not to show them off in the brochures if it's just a private home, mm -hmm. and they aren't under historical overlay or things like that, but it could be included in that. Go over it then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of questions. One question is for my own education. So I know we have different zoning, you know, the R and the B, um, and the historical overlay is occurs in different zoning areas. So is it yeah. is it considered its own zoning? No. Or is there like, it, so it's zoned to two things. It has this two kinds of zoning. One yes. zoning is historical overlay zoning, and one zoning is whatever it's zoned. Is, essentially, this is just an additional layer on gotcha. top of that. So you could be a residential, business, industrial, I mean, if it's an old yeah, factory gotcha. building or something like that. Um, so this doesn't change how you can use the building. Okay. It just changes the protections over what is done to the building. I that, but I didn't, uh, the word zoning was like, we have, yeah. And and I mean, it's kind of misleading because it's the historic right. overlay, but it's historic overlay zone. Oh, <laughs> that's the official title of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Jessica, so um, it, because, yes, I'd like All right. to answer, <laughs> it, and Jessica answered it, but to give a little bit better clarification, this is only an additional level. This mm -hmm. does not change anything that can be built on the property right. or affect anything around the property. Right. If you think about it, it puts a bubble over that lot or lots, depending right. on how many lots are, are in, in consideration, and protects the exterior of the structure only. Right. So, so that if anything, if anyone does anything, they have to come talk to us about it. Correct. Right. All it does is require the property owner to make um, a request to do it changes to the exterior of the property. That's all it does. Does the property belong to NISD or? No, ma'am. It actually belongs to the E.J. Campbell Alumni Association. Oh, okay. And one, and one other question. So when you look at the map of the historical overlays, they're different colors and they have different names. Mm -hmm. Will this be a separate one with a new name or will it be? This will be individually designated. Okay. Um, so, so you can be part of a larger one. district. Right. Um, or if you, are individual, if you are designated on your own as, and not part of a district, you are individually designated. Okay. Okay. Be yellow, it'll be yellow. It'll be mm -hmm. yellow, thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, I think there's I about. I there was going to be like a new color. <laughs> no, I think there's about. 30 or so that are individually okay. designated, and on our larger map, they're just like little plot points on their own. Okay. All right. Bright yellow. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? This is good that we talked about it. It's good that it's happening. Do I hear a motion to approve this? I move that we approve the application for the historic overlay zoning. I enthusiastically second <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Can I say... With the addition of number six. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes. I'll, I'll then add, yeah. I'm okay. With the issue of number six. Yes. Um, because this is going on to planning and zoning and ultimately mm -hmm. city council, mm -hmm. um, I would ask Chairman if you could actually have a, 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 a more um, specific, a yes. more specific let's, wording for a motion for approval. approval. Okay. Um, that way then, if I don't think this one will, because everybody agrees this is a good thing. But that Absolutely. way, then, if somebody were to protest it, simply to say, I move, we approve, uh -huh. there's nothing to base your appeal right. upon. Okay. Um, and several of you have been down that road with other cases. And so we need to be very specific in how you make a recommendation. I recommend approval based on X, Y, and Z. Right. So that there's some findings Section. that you can make. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we have a different or a, an additional <laughs> motion? 
Crosby. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I think you were I, volunteered. I, I, I move that we approve uh, case number HO2022-001, um, that it meets uh, section 5130 criteria 1, 2, 3, and 6 for the designation for historic overlook. Thank you. I Didn't still enthusiastically <laughs> second <laughs> said much. Very good. All in favor of approving the uh, one, two, three, and six criteria for the, this COA, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Wonderful. Go ahead and we go through the pictures. There's a 1946 Sandworm map if I would like to look at it, and it's in your packet as well. Yeah, and so the the auditorium and that other building are are no more. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. It's a nice looking building. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Told you it'd be fast. <laughs> <laughs>